Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Today I want to talk to you guys about five essential things that I've learned while painting with watercolor. I decided to go through some of my old paintings and pull out one of the ones that I painted when I just started and I'm going to show you guys some things I did then, some changes I make now and how it's just fully transformed my painting. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing that I want to do is show you guys this painting that I did when I was just starting out with watercolor. So it's definitely not the worst thing, but there's a few things right away that I notice with how the colors are really muddy and mixed together and there isn't much contrast, there isn't much definition. So I'm going to show you guys some paintings I've done recently of misty trees and just talk about what's changed. One of the first things that has completely transformed how I paint is the concept of going light to dark. So I'll compare right now with one of my more recent paintings. I have this one here that I did of trees and you can see how I was really focusing on on that concept of painting light to dark where I have the trees faded in the background and the ones that are more contrasted in the front. So it just adds so much depth to actually think about this when you're painting and start light to dark because if you don't you'll often end up with something more like this where it's a bit of a muddy mess just because all of the colors are very much the same same tone same saturation so then they mix together you can't really see too much definition in the trees so our first thing to focus on when you're painting is to truly follow the concept of light to dark. It will completely change how you paint. Um, I have this bigger painting of trees down here as well, where you can see how I really was focusing on that by starting with the layers in behind and building more and more to get this finished product. So with that being said, how do you know to paint light to dark? My second point that has honestly transformed how I paint is actually taking time to plan out my painting. So many of my paintings that I've done that I just haven't been super happy with honestly often have been a really rushed decision of what to paint and because of that I just end up with something that's yeah again just a muddy mess. Um, so with planning your painting there's a few things that you want to think about. So one of the things is color and where you're going to put your color. In this painting down here you see that I've yeah mixed mixed my color throughout. I'm going to talk a little bit more about color soon but the next thing with planning your painting is back to that concept of light to dark and planning your white spaces. So planning your white spaces is huge when painting especially with things like scenery. What you'll notice here is that I have I have a lot of color in here. I did leave some white spaces and I did start with a bit of the idea of the concept of light to dark but I didn't really continue with it and I ended up just mixing most of my colors. What you can see with my more recent tree paintings is that I actually really focused on where I wanted the trees, where I wanted the clouds and how I could make that effect happen. So there's different ways to do this. Sometimes I will paint a smaller sample painting of what I'm going to do lar larger just to plan out yeah, where I want my color, my shading, all of those things. Quite often I'll do a little bit of drawing with pencil and I'll draw super super light lines even if it's not fully defining the trees. I kind of block out, okay I'm going to put a cluster of trees here, a cluster of trees here and I'll plan it out that way. Um, again so important because it just adds to the depth of the painting to plan out those white spaces and plan out where you're going to put all of your aspects of your painting. So again I'll show you guys with this bigger painting but you'll see how planning that out ahead of time allowed me to have spots kind of like the trees in this corner where the light is really peeking through and here as well which just gives more of an illusion of the fog showing through which was my main goal with these paintings. Um, that would have been my goal with this painting as well but it took me some time to learn that so one thing that will help you guys so that you don't necessarily have to go through as much trial and error stage is actually take the time think about what you're painting study your reference photo if you're using a reference photo and just 
keep an eye on that as you're painting to take the time and not rush it. All right, so the fourth thing that I want to talk about is color mixing and paint pulling. Though somewhat go hand in hand with paintings, especially when you're doing things like the misty trees. I like to plan ahead and paint a color palette and make sure that the colors go together that I want. Um, again, in this palette or this painting, I don't mind the colors that I used, but specifically one thing that you'll notice with the pulling that I did in my painting is I can see here that I would have painted all of that with water and I would have just mixed colors in hoping to get the effect of fog and mist in my trees but instead I was using too much paint and I wasn't following the concept of going in layers taking my time not rushing so you can see with this big painting here one of the big differences is I was very intentional with my paint pulling um, to to be careful again back to our last point to leave that white space where I wanted it and I wanted in my trees to not just be all green I wanted to mix in some yellow some gray some different colors just to give more of the effect of of the picture that I was looking at the reference photo that I was looking at so again with that you want to study your photo look at what colors are in it often when we look at something that you know, as maybe a forest and we just see green when we look at it. If you look closer, you'll notice that there's blue, there's some yellow, there's some red. So it's important to study your paintings, plan that. And when you're doing scenery photos, um, yeah, allow the paint to do, to do its thing on the paper, but also be intentional with where you're putting your paint, where you're put, pulling your color, being careful to keep those white spaces where you want them. All right, so the fifth and honestly, I would say most important thing that has fully transformed how I've been painting is practice, which is such an obvious thing. But I know that when I started painting my mindset, because sometimes I'm a bit of a perfectionist in these ways, I would just want to dive right into the big painting and I would want it to be perfect. And then when it wouldn't, I would be disappointed. So one thing I have to tell you guys is do not de neglect practicing specific skills. So if you're painting and you find that you're struggling with things like fine detail in your artwork, then get yourself a practice paper and just practice painting the little branches on the tree. Or if you're struggling with bleeding the paint into where the water is on your paper, then just practice that, practice that with mixing different colors, practice that in different ways. So you don't always have to be painting a, a big painting. Um, right off the bat, you can do a smaller reference painting. You can take the time to practice. So again, something that seems obvious, but honestly, once you start painting, I feel like people get really hard on their set on themselves. So take the time, take the time to practice skills that you know you need to practice. And then when you translate it into your final painting, it'll be so much easier, so much less stressful and intimidating. Thanks for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped make painting less intimidating. I do encourage you guys to think about these things, use these techniques because they really will change and transform how you paint and they will take your paintings from a beginner level to an advanced level so much quicker. I noticed that a lot of you guys watching aren't subscribed yet, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and comment below what other tips you want to learn or things you want to learn to paint, and I would be happy to show you. See you next time.